So our next uh, order of business is to discuss the statement of understanding. This is a statement that is presented to council every February because it coincides with the new members coming on board. And the statement is a brief document that essentially describes how NHGRI and the council will conduct business. There are three sections to the statement, the review of grant applications by the council, staff administrative authorities, and exceptional circumstances. And I'll briefly run through all three of these. All applications that have undergone uh, initial peer review, before an award is made, they must undergo review by a National Advisory Council or board. And there are some exceptions. One is fellowships. Uh, the second one is contracts, although you do review the concept for contracts and then interagency agreements. There are specific types of applications that are required to be presented to you. These include large grants like program projects, and in our case, we like to have you review even what we consider P program uh, PARs that will have large budgets because many of them are associated with our significant uh, programs. Uh, applications that have been deferred from a previous round, applications that have human subjects or, am or animal concerns, those are on the list, although we don't really discuss them because that's an administrative action. Uh, applications from foreign institutions, applications designated for special counsel review, uh, applications um, on which staff is seeking advice, you know, sometimes there's not an issue, but staff, and you will uh, see one of those in our upcoming uh, closed session in which the staff is seeking your advice. Uh, most uh, of the applications, not all of the applications are listed on the closed session, but they are included in the electronic council book. So we won't discuss those, but if you have any any of them that you would like to bring to uh, the council for discussion by staff, you are free to do that. If you don't see an application that's listed on the CSA, then it will be approved by on block action at the end of the meeting. Now, council may take four actions on uh, grant applications. They may concur with the initial review group or defer the application for re-review because the initial review was flawed. They may recommend an application for high or low program priority, or they may defer the application for additional information. NHGRI also has the authority to conduct what we call expedited council concurrence. And this is a special case in which between councils, there may be applications that we would like to have council review, but not a full council. And uh, we will review these about four to six weeks before our regular council meets. The kinds of applications that fall within this group are applications for our SBIR program, STTR program, and our LC program. Now, both of these programs have set asides uh, so that we can't move money around with those. But we have also included additional ones on that group. Um, we don't, uh, the funding decisions are pretty straightforward. They're pretty simple so that uh, there, there usually are not any issues. However, if a council member has a concern with an application that's under expedited council review, that application can always come back to the council, which will be scheduled for the next four or five weeks. There is a subcommittee of council that reviews these applications. The current members are Brent Gravely, Jason Jury, and Gail Henderson. Uh, the subcommittee can request that any application be taken to full review, which we discussed. The listing of all the applications are, again, in your electronic council book. And all the ones that have reviewed by the by expedited council review are also listed in the ECB. So the next uh, section deals with staff administrative authorities. 
The staff can make supplemental awards to existing grants up to 150K or 25% of the total cost of all years that, was, that were approved by council. In the case of a grant that has a very large budget, a supplement will not exceed $1 million without council approval. The staff can extend funding to an existing grant for up to one year, but the level of funding cannot exceed the current level of support. While we can do these without consulting you, we do report them out to you, and again, that list can be found in the electronic council book. The third uh, section deals with exceptional situations. We have the authority to expedite council review of certain requests between regularly scheduled council meetings, for example, applications to address a public health emergency or taking advantage of an opportunity in biomedical research that would have a significant public health our trans NIH impact. Finally, in the event of a government declared state of emergency like an act of nature, council can review uh, applications electronically. Now we have made three significant changes to the statement from 2017 to 2018. And those are, we have expanded the types of applications that can be reviewed under expedited council review. These include career development awards. Those are KO1s, KO8s, and K99ROO. And small budget re research applications like RO3s, R21s, R13s. The second one is that there's a, there's a change in the section of staff administrative authorities. As mentioned, the staff can make two types of administrative supplements. One, up to 25% of the council approved total cost of an award capped at a million, or to extend an award for up to one year, not to exceed the current level of support. The 2018 statements uh, specifies that both types of supplements can be made to a grant, and that point was not specifically stated in the previous statement. The third has to do with exceptional or emergency situations, and in this case, we have added that um, the council can be convened electronically using email, teleconference, or a secure website to conduct uh, council business and we have added to that uh, if we have to reschedule so that we don't have to, um, if we have to reschedule, we don't have to reschedule if there is a government shutdown. So that, those are the three changes that we have added to the 2018 statement. And before I open it up to staff, to the uh, council, Deanna, do you have anything to add? All right, are there any questions about the 2018 statement? If not, then we do need a vote to accept this statement. So I'll need a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstention. So the motion carries. 